when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and his name was Jesus. Okay. Try to straighten out your sentences. Okay. All right. 
Uh, it's not like that. What what do you maybe you felt something different? Okay, uh like kissing your sister? Oh. Oh. Why do you have to bring that up? Why didn't you do that in the first place? Oh guys, it happens all the time. Oh, oh no, it does not happen all the time. I was just kidding. Yo, that's a guy. Yo, that's just look what happened. That's true. Okay. All right. Well, here's what I feel. The disturbance has sensed that there is going to be a bright, shining, vibrant, beautiful star that arises that we must follow. A very happy star. That is not a happy star. Like happy. We will follow it to the chosen one. All right. Chosen one, yes. Hello from the dark side! <laughs> Vader! Hey! Good to see you, yeah, my good friend! Good to see you guys! Yeah! We came to your galaxy because we were looking for, for you! Yeah! Yeah! Put it! Put it! Put it! Put it! Oh! That cannot be it. I literally can see nothing now. That's gross. It's getting really humid in here. It's not windshield wipers. Oh, oh, I just cleaned the girl's head. Oh, 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 it's getting gross. Oh my god! Oh, that's good. Hey, hey guys. Hey. So what are you, what are you doing? No, seriously, what are you doing on my dark side? We're, we're just following the star. The star, is, there's a prophecy that if we follow the star, it will lead us to the chosen one, who will be the lord of all lords of all galaxies. Destiny it is. The chosen one. Yeah. The chosen one have a beard. Is he handsome, wearing all black, standing right in front of you? Not that I, I don't know. all think so. No. Maybe the chosen one is. Is that star supposed to look better? I don't know. The astro I mean, we the astronomer told us to follow that star. The astronomer. Yeah, yeah. you're your astronomer. I my think. astronomer. He works for you. In my galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. The astronomer. Yeah. Yes. There's a. Do you know what he looks like? He, you point him out. Yeah. Uh, kind of is that oh, funny looking? The astronomer. Yeah. They yeah. told them to follow the star. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Awkward. Oh. <laughs> That's my The astronomer. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. We, we would have been here sooner. Yeah, we'll, we'll take. We'll be taking. We would have been here sooner, but traffic. There was traffic. There was, traffic. There was spaceships back behind spaceships and traffic. traffic. Was, yeah, there was construction. There was in my galaxy. galaxy. There was. Do we right. have a oh. construction? Okay. This is, we'll, need, we'll need a new construction guy. Yeah, I, I, right. I apologize. I, I hate to be like nitpicky. The weatherman on the TV channel weather. said it was going to be sunny skies. Those liars. That is. Oh, it it took us a weather, long time. Weatherman. Do you know what he looks like? Uh, kind of nerdy. No, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. Weatherman. Uh, and, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That wasn't even the weather guy. All they do is lie. That wasn't even him. Yeah, they still have jobs. I've never seen that guy. I'm replacing him. It's fine. Okay. Don't so, worry. Alright, don't worry. Uh, we're probably gonna keep moving, but there was, I don't mean to bring this up, but there was, uh, uh, there was some garbage out, really? some space A junk. garbage gas. Yeah, it's just no, 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 it's probably fine. It's probably fine. He was working on it. No, 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 no. Space rock. Yeah. See, look, he's working on Sir. Sir. Oh, Sir, sit down. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Clean better. I didn't mean to clean get better. Hey, You're terrible. You know what? I think we are going to keep following the star. Hey, wait, wait, wait. See ya. Hey, when you guys uh, find the chosen one, I'm dying to meet him. Hi. Oh, yeah, you yeah. are. Come on, Yoda. Hurry up. Let me know. Appreciate it. It's evil. See you there.
sorry. Chewy was Chewy was marking his territory all over the galaxy. It was disgusting territory. You're just filthy. Oh, get down! Come on! What is this? So, uh, where's the baby? Chosen one! Um, that's a question. Um, Wait, it's a, it's a baby. You, how do you lose a baby? He's a pelican. Um, he's somewhere around here. It's Chewy! Okay. It's okay. Good. Is this his? Um, Follow the scent, Chewy! This Follow the scent! Sweetheart! I can't believe you lost the chosen one. Chewy, stand How are you going to explain this to everybody else?
wise men have no idea what I'm going to do. They're going to lead me. Yes, sir. I think, I think they know. I think you shouldn't talk anymore. Thank you. Was, as I was saying, the wise men have no idea. They're going to lead me right to the chosen one. I will defeat the chosen one and become the cho- Sit down. Thank you. I will defeat the chosen one and become the chosen one. It is going to be so, so delicious. Let's go. 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 Raise them up over here. Help them feel better. Lift your hands up. 
Come and pick it up! Yeah! Yeah! Because I saw it coming, it was about to hit my head. I just. Whoa. So floaty. I don't laugh so hard if I hit you in the head. The force is strong with that one. <clears throat> it comes from good genes. I can't help but tell you, okay? <laughs> Woo! Hey. Uh, how exciting. Haven't they done a great job? Had tonight been awesome? Daniel, Daniel and John are amazing. They've been playing skits. Um, we've been playing these skits for a couple of weeks, and we're happy to be out here. And the, almost the entire team from the Woodlands campus is here, and, um, and we're excited because we've heard about the amazing things that God is doing in this student ministry. And we could could not be more proud of you and your team and your pastors, John and Daniel, and all of your interns and your volunteers and all of your leaders. You guys have an amazing ministry and you should be proud. Give it up for your pastors. Well, you gotta know something. The heart of tonight was twofold. One was to truly just have a great time and welcome in the Christmas season having a blast and having laughter and showing that church really is meant to be fun. It's meant to be a good time. It's meant to be something to be enjoyed. But, and listen to this. Listen to my heart for just a second. Your pastors also put in a lot of hard work. We put in a lot of hard work. Because we love them. And we truly believe that this season, the Christmas season, should serve as a reminder to all of us as to why we get up in the morning. Why we've been going to school and why we should strive to love our parents and why we should fight to come to church is because God truly did love the world so much that he did send the chosen one. He sent his one and only son. And his son, when he came, he knew that his son was going to have to give his life. That we might be, be able to arise from the dead. Because as funny as it was to see the two and a half year old raise people to the dead. But we believe in the Christian faith and the Christian church that there truly is a day. When the graves of believers will become empty. When the chosen one returns on the white horse and he raises his sword to defeat the enemy. And we will go to join with him in heaven and we will rule and reign on the earth because of what he promised in his word. Yeah! Jesus! So here's the deal. Listen up. If you've been taking notes, if you've heard, we've been kind of tracking through the, the story of the wise men. And here's what the story of the wise men is. The wise men saw a star rising in the sky. Can you just think about that with me for just one second? They walked outside, they'd been studying the stars, and they picked up their eyes, and in the distance they saw a star. They saw a star that they had noticed had not been there the night before. And think about this with them for just one second. From one single star, something about that star inspired them to get their caravans together. Now we always tell the story as though there was three wise men, but in case you didn't know, the Bible does not say that there was three wise men, it just says the wise men, and that they brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and so we assume there was only three wise men. But many people believe that there could have been hundreds of wise men. Hundreds of kings, and they were rulers of the east, which meant that they likely brought their caravans. It was more probably like something from, the, from Aladdin, when Prince Ali comes riding into town, right? Prince Ali, mighty is he, ruler of... Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And, and with the 10,000 gold camels and the peacocks and... Look at them, June, aren't they beautiful? Okay. Uh, and, and just this amazing display. And they come riding into town. And King Herod sees that they're there and is thinking that they've come to give him gold. And they said, no, we've come to worship the king of the Jews. Now just think about that. All of this started from the fact that the wise men saw a single star and they noticed that something was different. 
they recognized that God was doing something amazing because they saw a single star. I have a question for you. Are you paying attention to what is happening around you? Have you taken the time to consider that there really was a man named Jesus who was God's son and came and gave his life for you? And if you see that, does it inspire you to want to bring your very best? When the wise men saw the star and they knew that there was a king and it was sent by God, they brought their very best from him just from seeing a single star. And we have God's word that reminds us of his love for us and the fact that his son Jesus really did come. And he endured the shame of the cross, the whippings, the beatings, the thorns on his head, the royal robe that was put on him to be mocked. And when the, um, once it was stuck to his skin, it was ripped off and then he was hung half naked, if not naked, on a cross with all of his wounds being um, shown and nails through his feet and nails through his hands and he was hung on a cross. That's our sign. That there is a God who loved us. The wise men had a star. We had a star too. And his name was Jesus. Preach, God, preach. And our prayer for you yes. is that you have the same response to the message of Jesus with the wise men hand. That you see it and that tonight you respond. You respond not just by bringing your best but by trusting God with your very life. Listen to this. As the... Um, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 12, it says this, And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. You see, once the Magi encountered Jesus, once they realized that he truly was the chosen one, the Savior of the world, when God came and spoke to them in a dream and said, Go a different way, the Magi said, Yes, sir. It may not be easy to go a different way, but we'll travel through the desert. We'll go over the hills. We'll do whatever it takes because, God, you have done a miracle. You put a star in the sky, and you brought the Savior to the world, and we are happy to follow you in obedience. And what we long for you to do, what our prayers for you is that when you encounter Jesus, if you truly can place your faith upon the fact that God so loved the world, that he sent his only son to die for you, that not only will you believe that, but you'll also receive Jesus as your Lord. So that when God speaks to you through his word and he reminds you and challenges you to honor your family, honor your parents, to treat others the way that um, God loves you, that you will respond in obedience to do that the same way the wise men responded in obedience. Listen to what Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 16. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man, the Chosen One, is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And will then repay every man according to his deed. Have you trusted God? Not only with your possessions, but with your life. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we had a lot of funny skits tonight, but don't miss this. In the humor, in the fun, and in the laughter, know this. There is a God. He's a good God. And he made a way for you to have forgiveness for your sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The times that we've chosen to go against God's laws, the times that we've chosen to go against God's plan for our lives, the Bible calls that sin. And the cost of that is that we deserve to die, but God loved us. Listen, this is what it says in John 3.16. I've already quoted it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We've been challenging you to respond to what you feel We've been challenging you to respond in generosity to the impact that God has had on your life. To be able to recognize that God has given us every good thing. As it says in heaven, every good gift comes from heaven above. And out of what God has given to you to give back to him. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring a box right up here on the stage. It's going to be right here on the front of the stage. And during this next song, we're going to sing a song. And the song is called Christmas Alleluia. It's, it's really an awesome song. And during that time, if you would like, 
If you brought something tonight, if you brought a tithe, if you brought something that you want to give away, if you cleared with your parents, you said, you know what, Mark, I, I don't want to give this up, but I cleared with my parents to give up some jewelry. I cleared with my parents to give up this thing or whatever. What I'm praying is that this will be the most generous night in the student history of the student ministry. Why? Because you have to? No, because the real joy in Christmas is not about what you get. It's about you reflecting the attitude of what God did for us when he gave his son that we give freely back to him. Why? Because we love him. Because God needs your money. Because God needs your gift. Because God needs your glasses or your phone or your shoes. No, God doesn't need those things. God has everything. He's in control of all things. But it is your opportunity to express the fact that you love God the way that he loves you. That you are responding to his love for you. The Bible says we love because he first loved us. And this is your chance to give back to God from what he's given to you. But know this as well. As the words are, singing, are being sung in the song, I hope you'll listen to them. It's the Christmas story. And if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me challenge you to do this. You don't need to come give. If you want to, you can. But what I do want you to do is to make sure that you stop. And you know for certain before you leave this room, whether or not you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Whether or not you know for certain that if you died today, that you would go to be in heaven. It's not about what you do. It's about what he did for you on the cross. And if you have the courage to be able to say, you know what, I get it. I have these funny Star Wars skits and all. I get it. And if that's you, as you hear the words of this song, I hope that you will embrace it. That you'll accept and you'll believe that there truly was a man named Jesus. A baby Jesus who was born in a manger grew to be a man, gave his life for you. And if you place your faith that your sins can be, be forgiven through your faith in Jesus Christ, then know this. You don't have to fear what's going on in the world and you don't have to fear the day that death comes knocking on your door because death has been defeated in the name of Jesus Christ for you. Heaven is your new home. Enjoy this song. And if you have a gift to bring, if your parents gave you some money or you saved some money or you found something and you want to come and give back to God and say, God, I love you. This is your gift. This is my Christmas hallelujah. <laughs> the box is here to do during the song. You don't have to give. You're not forced to give. But if you'd like to experience the joy of giving and bringing your best to God, this is your time. Enjoy this song. Christmas Adam, guys. Christmas Adam.